I wanna share with you an email marketing campaign that landed me over 100 new clients, 175 to be exact, in 2023, and will work even better for you in 2024. Plus, it's easy to implement, it doesn't take hours of work, it's simple to follow, and best of all, it works for all agencies, regardless of size or how long you've been running. You can use this email marketing strategy on a small list or a large list, and it even works on email lists that have been ignored or even dead for a long time. There's no cold emailing or mass database spamming. I've used this exact same strategy to grow my email list size to the tens of thousands, plus landed real world sales for us, totaling over $100,000 in revenue from email sales alone last year. And to get started, we need to understand the difference between a Harley Davidson and a Fisker Karma. So when it comes to email marketing, too many people start at the wrong end of the journey. Most people try to start with the best type of email campaign to run, or if there's like a new email style that seems to be very popular, and they're starting in completely the wrong place. I wanna tell you the story of two businesses, Harley Davidson and Fisker, with their Fisker Karma. One of these companies started selling bicycles. They actually specifically started uh, selling engines that attached to like push bicycles. They were like these little one stroke things that you would kind of bolt on and it would motorize a regular like, bicycle, right? The other one, wanted to sell high-end luxury electric vehicles. And in 1901, Harley-Davidson basically created this kind of little like engine for push bikes. 2011, a company called Fisker released the Fisker Karma. Now, which one of these companies have you heard of? Which one of these companies do you think is the most popular brand tattoo on the planet? You see, Harley-Davidson focused on their customers and building products for their customers. They started with individual engines and it wasn't until much, much later, almost decades later, that they released their own motorbike, the thing they're most famous for. But that comes from listening to their customers. Fisker spent millions of investor money, raised capital on research and development, marketing, sales, they had a PR and branding team. They had an advertising campaign, media strategy. They had state-of-the-art cutting-edge manufacturing. And when Fisker launched, no one bought their car. It had zero acclaim. And they actually went bankrupt trying to kind of catch up with their sales. And they basically tried to get too big too fast. My point is that unless you have a product to sell, all of the research and development is worthless. So I want us to start with a sales page. This needs to be something that people can actually buy. The most important thing when it comes to email marketing is having a place where people can actually give you money. So if I draw a really simple like checkout here, you can see I'm a designer at heart. And then before that, we need to have a sales method. Now there are three kind of sales methods that I really like using. You have webinars where people like join and you sell kind of en masse. Uh, you can do one-to-one -one calls, which I really like personally, especially for products kind of above $5,000. I like to do a one-on-one -on -one call. Like over Zoom is fine. Or there is, like I said, the checkout page, uh, which we've kind of got here. But the important thing is no matter which sales method you use, you need to have a place for people to be able to give you money. The number of times I've worked with businesses who have said, yeah, we wanna do email marketing, social media marketing, whatever. And I go, great, like where are people gonna go in order to give you money? And they say, oh, we send invoices or we have payment plans. I'm like, that's way too complex. Regardless of the sales method, for any marketing campaign, you need to have a place where people can physically give you money. And then before that, we're gonna choose a method. And so what we really need before this is like a call to action. And this is gonna be one of either two pieces. You're either gonna have a URL, like a, a link, or you're gonna have a place for people to be able to book in um, like a calendar. And the calendar can work for the webinar or the call, but the link can work for the webinar or the checkout page as well. So you need to have these three things before we even think about creating a really clever email marketing campaign. So if we look at the email marketing campaign, 
We're going to build this out together now. In fact, if you grab a piece of paper, you could probably actually do this like live with me. I like to run in 10 day cycles. It gives me enough space to kind of test out different methodologies. And we've been using this for a long time. We use it with our customers. And like I said, we even use it on our cold and dead email lists to be able to sort of have people start responding. And what I want you to understand is that in those 10 days, we have five different types of email. I'm going to draw this little star here. S, 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 and S. These five different types of emails are essentially the building blocks behind any type of email that you're going to send. How many times do you check Facebook? How many times do you check Twitter or X? How many times do you check your email? You check all these different platforms multiple times a day. You check your emails multiple times a day. And there are certain creators that you follow who you want to hear from even two or three times a day. I want you to think about your emails like this. If you sent an email and for every email you sent, the person who opened it had $1 immediately placed into their account, how long do you think it would be before they would unsubscribe? They wouldn't, right? If anything, they'd be hitting refresh <laughs> on their inbox being like, I hope they send another email because you'd putting $1 into their account each time. My point is that people unsubscribe when the content isn't relevant to them, not to do with the frequency. If anything, like I said, there are probably creators out there who you want to hear from multiple times a day. All I'm saying is that do your emails have at least $1 worth of value? So if we come back to our types of emails, these are the different types. My first one is what we call a story. These can be things like anecdotes, they can be metaphors, sometimes like hearsay, maybe bordering on gossip. Origin stories are quite good, like you telling things about your past, just daily life. Behind the scenes is, is pretty useful as well. Maybe there's something that you've been taught, um, and the best type of story is a case study. These are almost like mini blog posts. Now, for anyone who subscribes to my newsletter, you know that sometimes the emails are a few paragraphs. Sometimes I'll write the entire blog post in there and just send it out. Story-based emails are one of the best ways to connect with your audience, and they don't have to have a call to action in them. They can do, but they're a really good way of connecting with the actual human being who's opening those emails. By the way, I'll actually include a link to kind of the overview of this down in the description below so you can kind of uh, get an overview. But in the meantime, the second type of email is share. Share emails are when you're taking content on another platform, like past content. Maybe it's content that you've found. Maybe it's like a video on your YouTube channel. Roundups also work really well. Maybe you've got the five best books on how to manage your money or the five best TikTok accounts to follow for you know, new marketing strategies or whatever, and putting them in. This is sharing either your content or other people's content. Again, this is a very easy type of email to create. It's one of the easiest ones to outsource, but it's also a really good way of beginning to push people into other media that you might have. The third type of email is what we call a segmentation email. A segmentation email is gauging interest. So if you were at a huge sporting arena or like a concert or something, and there may be like 10,000 people there, and for some reason, because the you know <laughs> promoter of the event like lost a bar bet to you or something, they say, you get to have 30 seconds on stage in front of these 10,000 people. What are you gonna do? Now, if you wanna promote your business, what most people will do is they'll talk about themselves. They'll say, hey, I run a marketing agency. We help small businesses build websites that are really useful. And that to me is the wrong thing to do. A segmentation email is the equivalent of saying, can I get everyone who is a new dad to raise their hands? And you'll have a bunch of people raise their hands, right? And you then say, keep your hand raised if you've started a new business recently. And then a few hands will go down, but you'll still have some hands raised up. And then you say, keep your hands raised if you want to make another $100,000 this year. 
And you're gonna have a small segment of the market who have been called out with their hands raised. And you say, if you've got your hands raised, I want you to go to newdadsixfigurebusiness.com or whatever and download our free guide. What you're doing is you're addressing a hyper-specific segment of the market and that's what a segmentation email is. So it might be saying something like, um, I'm putting together a new Facebook group for mums who wanna launch a course, or I've got a 10 point checklist about retiring before the age of 55. You're trying to call out a specific problem to a specific audience, and that's something you can send to a list or a, an audience in order to segment them. The fourth type of email is maybe my favorite sentence. A sentence, you might've heard it called like a nine word email. These are really good for getting replies. So you might say something like, uh, what's the number one thing that stresses you in your business? Or if you could fix one thing in your business, what would that be? Uh, one that I really like that I've been using recently is I can give you 10 to 100 of one thing. What is that thing? And people reply back and they say like, I would love nine new clients. Imagine a lead or a customer saying, I'd love nine new clients because I then reply, I can help you get nine new clients. What type of clients are they? So you're starting that dialogue. That's why I like sentence based ones because they start to tell you what's the market interested in and you begin to get some feedback. The last type of email, maybe the most important type is sales. Sales emails are driving specific calls to action to solve a problem. You know, it's, hey, visit this page because you have this promotion. Now, in an ideal world, we only send sales emails to people who have been segmented or people who have replied to a sentence. But that's not always true. There's nothing wrong if you've got a great promotion on or if you are launching a new campaign to send sales emails to your entire list. The point is that we obviously don't wanna do it too often. So if we come back to our 10 day plan, here's how I like to arrange these different types of emails. So the first three days are either a story, a share, or a sentence. So it's either number one, number two, or number four. And then we do that for day two and day three. And then on day four, we send a segmentation email. So a segmentation email might be related to the topics from like two stories and a share. They don't have to be, but you might say something like, hey, I've got this new 10 page PDF about how to launch your first website or whatever. And then we do that again. We do story, share or sentence, story, share or sentence, story, share or sentence. And then we send another segmentation email. And then we send story, share or segment for day nine. And then on day 10, we send a sales email. Now, there's a bunch of ways that you can not overcomplicate this, but you can certainly get more specific. For example, you might have an automation sequence that when anyone replies to a segmentation, sends them a sales campaign. Between you and me, that's actually my way of running these email campaigns. I have a ton of sales campaigns listed out that are designed to specifically be sent to people who reply to our segmentation. By the way, if you want to check out the marketing software that I use and get access to like a ton of campaigns and a ton of automations that are really good examples and that you could rewrite and steal and use, including my funnels, if you head over to sellyourservice.co.uk forward slash high level or you use the link down in the description below, you can actually get a 30 day free trial to the exact software that I use. Like I said, loaded with all of my like best performing campaigns and uh, segmentations and automations and things. So you can just kind of copy and paste them using them for your customers and for your own business. But anyway, back to the video. So what I like to do is then have story-based emails, share-based emails and sentences going out. But segmentation emails are designed to gauge interest. But the sales campaign on day 10, it might well be kind of broadcast to everyone saying, hey, by the way, we have this brand new lead generation strategy that we're running, why don't you book a call with us? And that's why, if you remember, this call to action is so important that you've chosen because the call to action is what goes inside the sales emails and the call to action is also what goes inside your sales automation campaigns. So we've got 10 days worth of content and here's how I do this. So you guys are now gonna see like, this is genuinely mind boggling this bit. A year is basically four quarters and inside each quarter we have one, uh, three months and inside three months we have uh, four weeks, roughly speaking. Each quarter is about 90 days long. So if you create this plan 
nine times, you've got 90 days worth of email content. Now, what I would suggest is you take that 90 days and you repeat it in quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. And you start to compare the emails and how they perform over time. Here's the really interesting thing about repeating content. Everyone thinks, oh, they're gonna see past it. First of all, if your emails are so popular that every single person on your list reads every single email and remembers them to the point where they remember them three months later and they go, they've sent the same, same email again. Do you know what's really interesting about that? No one ever says to you, oh my God, I can't believe you sent the same email again. They actually like reading it again the same way that I have watched Shit's Creek about 20 times now. So we're saying that the absolute worst thing that can happen is that if someone recognizes you've sent an email again, your emails are so good that they open them twice, remember something you've written, and everyone is reading them. That's the worst case scenario of you copying content quarter to quarter. The reality is no one's gonna do that. No one's gonna even notice. Maybe once a year or twice a year you refresh it, that's up to you, that's what we do, but don't overwork the amount of content that you have to create. The thing is, now that you have a total email marketing strategy going forward, you're gonna want to run regular quarterly campaigns with your current products, which is why I've got this video right here showing you how we launched a $20,000 campaign with zero new products using email marketing. So if you wanna see how I did that and how you can do it for your own business and for your clients, go ahead and click here to watch this video.